Hello, my name is Sarah Mullally and I have the privilege of being the Bishop of London. Welcome on this Easter day to the old deanery. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. A few years ago, I needed a small operation. And you might think with well over 30 years experience in the National Health Service, I would have felt calm and confident. Well, I didn't. I had never been a patient in hospital and I had never had an anaesthetic. So, and maybe there's something about knowing just enough to know what could go wrong and the reality that sometimes things do go wrong that made me nervous, although I had no reason to think anything would happen in this situation. And as I lay on my bed waiting for the anaesthetist to put me to sleep, all I wanted was somebody to hold my hand. Now it wouldn't have reduced the risk, it wouldn't have made things better, but it would have told me that I wasn't alone. And I was very encouraged last week to hear both the head of the Royal College of Nursing and the government's chief nursing officer tell us that nurses wouldn't allow patients to die alone. Throughout the Bible, there is a recognition of the importance of the human touch both its pleasure and reassurance, and yes, sometimes pain. The combination of the kiss and the embrace is not unfamiliar in the Christian tradition. It is used as a prophetic statement about the union of heaven and earth. The psalmist tells us, mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace has kissed each other. Here the divine and the human touch. Easter reminds us that God has touched the world in Jesus Christ. And touch is central to Jesus' relationships with other. Filled with compassion, he reached out and touched the leper. A woman who had suffered for many years from a bleeding disorder touched the hem of his garment and was healed. Jesus took Jairus' daughter by the hand and told her to get up. He took the man who couldn't speak or hear aside and touched his mouth. He took the blind man by the hand and touched him. And people brought little children to him to be touched. And of course, the betrayer kissed him. And there on the road to Emmaus, as he broke bread, his presence touched those he was with and their hearts burned. Touch brings reconciliation, reconciliation to each other and to God. It brings restoration, restoration of relationship, and touch brings healing. Which is why maybe we are grieving so much, because we have lost our freedom to touch. Not to be able to touch is countercultural for the mother who longs to hug a child in pain. For when we meet somebody, the least we want to do is clasp them by the hand or even embrace them. Touch may not make things better, but it does tell us that we are not alone. And here in our reading from John's Gospel, we have Mary in the garden, in the midst of grief and in the darkness of death. And Jesus tells her, do not touch me, do not hold on to me. This feels like a very hard ban. It has become the inspiration for a number of pictures, not least by Titian, Nolmi Tangier, Touch Me Not. In Titian's picture, Mary kneels in humility. In one hand, she holds oil, reminding us of how she broke the oil over Jesus' feet, how she held his feet and worshipped him. Her other hand, is reached out, seeking to touch Jesus. But in the picture, the shroud falls between them, like a veil between the living and the dead, a barrier to her touch, the touch that she so longs to have. Do not touch me, do not hold on to me, is explained by Jesus, for he has yet to ascend to his Father and our Father, to his God and our God. And he has yet to send the Holy Spirit, who will reveal who he really is. 
Mary was holding on to who she thought Jesus was with all her misconceptions. It had been Mary's sad searching that had mistaken Jesus for the gardener. Titian's picture portrays the tension between Mary's love for Jesus, Jesus' love for her, but his desire to lead her into a deeper truth. It was only once Jesus had ascended and the Spirit had come that Mary would understand who Jesus really was for her and for us. In this place, the place that we stand on this Easter day, we find ourselves in a place of grief. Grief for those who have died, grief for those who are suffering, grief for what could have been. Grief for the loss of many things that give us our identity. Grief for what we thought the church was. And we should hear the words of Jesus. Do not hold on to me, for he longs to lead us into deeper truths. And although Mary could not touch Jesus, in her grief she glimpsed the hope that Jesus had spoken of. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And in a sense, we have no more or no less than Mary. For we, like her, have glimpsed the hope of Easter. Death does not have the last word. We have glimpsed the promise of a new creation, a new creation without pain and suffering. Now, our hope is not blind optimism. It is with hope that we can have our eyes open to the suffering around us, but yet believe in the future. Let us this Easter day not deny our grief, but be open to let go of who we think Jesus is for us and allow the Spirit to lead us into deeper truth. Let us, like Mary, go and tell that we have seen the Lord and by the hope that we have glimpsed, be motivated to touch the world. And whilst we may not be able to do it physically, maybe we could do it by phoning somebody up that we know who is lonely, by giving money to the food banks, by praying, by staying at home and supporting the National Health Service. But let us also know this Easter day, the message of Easter is that God has touched the world and that we are not alone. Alleluia, Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia.